This is Pat, Pat Cosmack. She is a master gardener with um, University of Illinois Extension. She's been gardening since 1995, but she's been a master gardener since 2000. She's received the Outstanding Master Gardener Award and the Sustained Excellence Master Gardener Award in 2008. And she enjoys volunteering for many projects, the Ronald McDonald House, We Grow Dreams, and helps at several of the Giving Gardens. And she is an active member of the Master Gardener Speakers Bureau, as you can see. Her areas of interest include water gardening, vegetables, annuals, and perennials. She currently has one water garden in her yard and is building another much larger one. She also has one in her basement. And with that, I will let you take it away, Pat. Well, thank you very much. Um, good evening to everybody. Thank you for spending a little time with us tonight. We appreciate uh, you giving us your time to be here tonight. Um, again, my name's Pat. I'm a master gardener with the University of Illinois Extension. Um, and I am going to turn off my camera right now so we can do this. There's my screen. Great. All right. That should be working. All right. Um, Extension provides practical research-based programs to help people improve their lives. Um, we are the home of 4-H. We provide economic information, um, health information, and natural resources, which is the gardening area where I am in. Um, the master, in order to become a master gardener, we take about 70 hours worth of classes and give back or volunteer 60 hours of time to our communities to earn the title. Um, after that, it is 10 hours of education every year, followed by at least 30 hours of time. Um, again, we are volunteers. We love giving our time and sharing what we know with our communities. And with that, we'll begin tonight's presentation which is late summer and fall colors in the garden. Um, this, was a pro uh, this was a program created by one of our educators who teach the classes to us and uh, make sure we know the things that uh, we need to know to do this. So with that said, moving on. Um, fall is a gorgeous season in the garden. Um, behind, beyond the flower, color, flower colors that we get right now in the season, um, we can get fall foliage colors. Um, fall is also a, a season of excess. A lot of our gardens look like this because we don't think about the fall season. This is September, uh, garden in September. Things are kind of past their prime, although a lot of things still look nice. The grasses in the background still have their tufts on them and uh, other things are looking kind of spilling over each other and getting too big and you're starting to think about cleaning it up. Um, but most people don't plant for a small garden. Spring and summer take priority and fall is kind of left to itself. We don't think about that. We want to get started in the spring. Uh, summer is, you know, the, the most, the biggest time where we show everything. But a lot of people think, don't think about fall. Um, there are still plenty of things that bloom in au late August and September and even into October. Um, fall is a neglected season. I mean, it's not spring or early summer. It's kind of time for procrastination, but you know, af after you've started your garden and you've, you've cleaned up in March, you've planted through April and May and looked at things and cleaned up and you get kind of tired when it comes to about August or so. But you know, why should you get tired? There's still a lot of gardening season left. Um, fall is one of the best times to plant perennials and bulbs and things. We've got warm days, we've got cool nights, and uh, the soil is still a great temperature for uh, uh, planting things as well as grow the growing season. Um, we're going to talk a little about, uh, hopefully give you some ideas for what to plant. Um, there's a lot of other plants available that aren't covered here, but this is just to give you some ideas for what you can plant in your own gardens. The plants we have uh, that we're suggesting this evening bloom from August until frost, and that can be mid-October or, or even later. Um, you know, there's trees, there's ornamental grasses, and there's shrubs that still have time to bloom. Um, one of the things to think about is 
you know, start thinking about how your fall foliage colors can complement what you have in your garden. And uh, at the end of the program, we'll talk about a few combinations uh, to recommend for your gardens of plants that grow great in our area. So with that said, one of um, the most familiar plants are uh, fall blooming anemone. Um, there are a variety of uh, uh, there are a variety of different types of anemones. They're all vigorous growers if planted in uh, a great place. These are things that uh, don't need a lot of sun and can be planted in shade. Um, the one you see on the left, Honoring Jobert, is, uh, was discovered in 1958 in France. Um, it's a beautiful clear white. Um, lots of other colors are available. Queen Charlotte is a double pink. And uh, the little one on the bottom is uh, called Little Princess. And this is a shorter one. This only grows to about three feet, whereas some of the other ones can grow uh, a little taller than that, uh, three and a half, four feet, maybe a little bit taller. Um, fall blooming asters. The aster family is huge. There are many different kinds of asters. Um, this one, you know, do if you're interested, do a little research because they are available sometimes in spring. Um, there's a lot, most of them are late summer bloomers. Um, not to get too technical here, but um, the genus Aster is being picked apart and uh, there's different kinds. There's some found in New England. There's uh, some from the New York area. They're both listed under the, and I don't know what that one is. Aster remains the common name of everything. Um, all of this is great importance to botanists botanists, as well as taxonomists, you know, just to get the right name and the right one, but they're all still members of the aster family. Um, many were first considered roadside weeds in dry open areas. Um, the New England aster on the left can cause a skin rash for some gardens. It's a very, it's a very pretty flowering aster. However, the uh, better cup but uh, flower is the one on the right, which is a New York aster, which is also called a Michael Mass daisy. Um, they bloom around the end of September, September 29th, which is St. Michael's Day in the British Isles. And, uh, you know, as you can see from between the one on the left and the one on the right, the one on the right, the New England aster just doesn't have as many ray flowers. Um, this is a uh, honey song pink. Is, a new, is an aster with pink flowers with uh, bright yellow centers. Um, this one uh, is small. It grows to about uh, two feet or so. Um, uh, the one on the bottom, Alma Pachki, it grows to about four feet tall with uh, bright rose colored flowers. Um, some, sometimes uh, on this one, the foliage looks bad um, due to a fungus if you have really high humidities and it also can flop over um, if it starts flopping over, put, uh, you know, uh, use uh, some kind of uh, stake to it. Um, a peony, uh, a peony uh, hoop works great for asters. Um, moving on here. This is yet another one. A uh, purple dome is, uh, maintains a mi nice mounded habit. Um, it's a uh, flowers later in the season, uh, September-ish, and grows to about a uh, foot and a half to two feet tall. Um, this one can also get uh, leaf fungus if it's not, if it's too humid in the summer. Um, try not to crowd it, um, just kind of leave enough room around it so air can circulate really helps. Um, as you can see on the right, this, uh, the purple color looks great, planted with goldenrod. Um, where are we here? Okay. Um, this is uh, the New York aster, some varieties here, or uh, the Michael Moss daisy. It's a common New England roadside plant. Um, again, they bloom around uh, September 29th. Um, leaves are smooth. Uh, blue Lagoon is uh, on the left. It has uh, bright blue blossoms. It grows to about two feet tall. Um, the other one on the right, Peter Harrison, it has pink flowers in September and October. And uh, this is a shorter one, only reaching about a foot and a half tall. 
um, another uh, fall blooming plant, uh, Boltonia asteroides. Um, this particular variety is called snow blank. This grows uh, to about three to four inches tall. It's best in full sun, but kind of does in require some uh, support. It does tend to flap around a little bit, so you might want to put uh, some support in for these. Um, here's another one. This is leadwort. Um, this has deep blue flowers in August. Flowers um, are actually kind of small. They're about the size of a nickel. It's a good ground cover. It's a short plant. This only grows eight to 10 inches tall. Um, and this uh, thing to know about this particular one is that it does emerge very late in the spring. So if you planted it last year and it's the middle of May and you're still not seeing anything yet, just be a little more patient and it'll come up. In the fall, let's see here, here we go. In the fall, the foliage turns uh, kind of a bronzy red very attractive. Um, it's just uh, another season of this plant. This is Threadleaf a Blue Star Flower. This was the 2011 perennial plant of the year. Um, this has spring flowers that are blue. Um, after bloom, uh, the foliage, as you can see on the right, it just makes a beautiful black drop for some of our uh, other summer blooming plants. Uh, this grows about uh, three feet tall to about three feet wide. Joe pie weed is a great plant. This is kind of a st uh, tall plant. This one can grow to five or six feet tall by the when it uh, blooms. Um, this one prefers uh, full to partial sun and moist soil. Um, it's got uh, great flower heads that are packed together to make you know, it can make almost a 12 inch or 12 inch or larger diameter flower, what looks like flower compound on the top of it. Grows best in the cooler parts. Should bloom mid August through September. Butterflies love this. There is another cultivar called Little Joe. If uh, the five foot plus tall plant is too tall for the area you want to put it in. Um, Little Joe grows to about three and a half foot tall. Okay, Rudbeckia, coneflower. This gets confusing since uh, most people think of coneflowers as the echinacea species. Um, common, common name is uh, Black Eyed Susan for this. And uh, these bloom later in the season also. Um, full sun, uh, this is called Goldstrom. Um, this was, uh, plants originally were brought to Czechoslovakia. And this one was actually discovered in uh, 1937. Um, it's got three inch uh, wide yellow flowers. Plants bloom from late July to September. Um, this is one that uh, doesn't propagate well by seeds. It needs to be propagated um, uh, vegetatively. Um, it's very popular. Um, and uh, this is just a great uh, plant to have in your yard. Uh, another one, this is called uh, uh, Sweet uh, Coneflower. This particular variety is Henry Eilers. Um, the flowers on this have a beautiful scent of anise. Um, this grows four to five feet tall and uh, starts blooming in late August. Okay, back to the Black Eye Susans. Um, these are generally in our area best treated as an annual um, because not, they don't necessarily uh, come back. It gets too cold here for them. Um, blooms midsummer through fall. This one does best in dry weather. Um, it, it, it is susceptible to fungal diseases if it gets too, uh, too wet. Um, so just kind of make sure it's got enough room around it so air can circulate. Fall blooming we have we have a question. Yes, ma'am. Will any of the coneflowers or echinacea plants spread? Oh yeah, they spread. Um, some of them, the echinacea, some of them will reseed. 
but uh, generally in this area, it, it gets kind of cool in the in the winter sometimes. Um, if it gets too cold, the seeds won't germinate, but uh, they do spread. And I had a question about um, the, um, is it the Pachki asters? Okay. They, they grow really tall. I have some in my garden. Are we able to, can we um, like put them back early in the seasons to kind of stunt the growth? Okay, kind of uh, cutting cutting them back. We were getting to, but we can talk about. Oh, that. okay, no, just wait. No, we'll wait. Till we that's okay because a lot of these, especially the mums, need to be trimmed back in order to kind of keep them, shape them, and keep them from getting too kind of gangly. Um, generally, we want to pinch uh, fall blooming mums. We want to pinch these back um, to about a foot or so until about July 4th. And that kind of goes for most of the rest of the plants we're talking about here. Um, if, if we pinch them back, what happens is it, it makes the plant send out uh, more side uh, uh, stems. And it, when you get more side stems, you'll get more flowers when it comes in the fall. But we'll talk a little bit about that too. All right, where am I here? Uh, fall blooming mums. Fall blooming mums come in just about every color except blue. There's different flower types. There's kind of ruffled double ones like you see here. And uh, then we've got other ones like the one you see down here in the right that, you know, uh, aren't as ruffled and look have more of a daisy look to them. Um, a lot of times we buy them in fall. A lot of places, uh, a lot of places do a fall mum sale. Um, these are great. Um, we want to make sure that uh, we get them. In, we get them in the uh, ground as soon as we can, um, because the more time they have in the ground, the more time they have to anchor their roots in, and the better they'll come in next year. Um, make sure you get, uh, you know, good root to soil contact when you plant them, to remove any poor, any uh, air pockets. Um, if we've got a cold, you know, snow cover and the you know, the freezing temperature, the floor, it doesn't, uh, if it freezes early or for a long time, sometimes they won't come up. Um, mums don't let, don't like it wet in the spring. So uh, we want to make sure that we plant them in good drainage. Um, sometimes you can find them in the spring um, when they're small, four or five inches tall. Um, they've had a few plant, flowers forced to show you the color that they are, but you want to get, take the flowers off if you buy them in the spring and uh, plant them and uh, make sure that uh, you pinch them off once they start growing, you know, by about uh, early July. Okay, fall blooming mums, if you, you know, this is what it looks like July 20th. Um, you buy one of those, you know, nice bushel baskets, you plant it in the spring, comes back, um, it, it, it plant, cut it, you know, make sure it's cut back and uh, it'll uh, flower, you know, by mid-September. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Mums are, uh, can be pinched or cut back, spring growth. Um, Again, uh, around July, July 4th-ish, right around there, you want to pinch them back and keep them about, oh, 8 to 12 inches until then, and then uh, just let it go. Um, mum set buds in response to warm nights and shorter days, which, of course, happens after uh, the equinox in June. Okay, another one, uh, showy stone crop. Um, formerly a sedum. They keep changing names on a lot of these plants, uh, you know, because they find it's related to something else. Um, this is another great fall bloomer. Sedums are great in fall. fall. Um, it will, we'll just keep referring to this as sedum because that's what everybody knows it is at this point. All right. Do you grow sedums in your house, in your yard? Has this happened to you? Does your seed, has your sedum looked like this? Um, Flower heads get large and heavy and tend to flop over. So we want to um, cut these back in, uh, in yeah, mid-July or so. 
and uh, you pinch it back mid July uh, or so. This actually is in the fall after the flower heads have gotten uh, really have big and heavy and they've fallen over. So think about next year um, and uh, cut, uh, cut them back or pinch them off. And, and both terms can be used interchangeably, cut them, cut them back or uh, pinch them off. Pinching is using your fingers, cutting them is using with, you know, a pair of uh, snippers to do that. And uh, if you do that, uh, then uh, they'll, uh, the heads need only to, uh, the heads will uh, be a little bit stronger. The alternative is you can also use uh, some form of a, a stake on them, such as, again, a peony hoop. Is it too late to do that this season? No, it is not. No, it is not. We're, we're at the beginning, you know, uh, beginning, getting towards mid-July. So this would be a great time to uh, pinch these back as well as any mums that you've got starting to grow in your garden now. And will pinching them back make them fuller like other plants or does it just give them better support? Um, actually, it, it, it makes them a bit fuller just like it does the other plants. Again, um, it's the, you pinch back the tops and it forces the plant to grow out some more side stems. So that'll make the plant look fuller. Okay, cut back again when they're 10 inches tall. This is just a picture of your sedums on the right in May before they're pinched off and uh, in October when they've got that great uh, pink color and uh, just look gorgeous in the yard when you haven't got a lot of other things that are colored. Okay, again, um, use a hoop grid. Um, most of us know this as a peony grid. Um, you know, once, once your peonies are done, perhaps you can reuse them um, or uh, whatever works best in your garden. Um, left is uh, plant uh, early in the season and uh, the right, these are sedums here, of course. And this was uh, at the end of August, right before it starts blooming. Just another picture of how, uh, how it looks after it's been pinched and properly staked. Okay, um, goldenrod. Goldenrod has uh, been un unfairly accused of causing hay fever. Ragweed is actually the culprit and they get confused because they both bloom about the same time. Uh, goldenrod pollen is sticky and the insects need to move it. Uh, however, uh, ragweed has a fine dust which is uh, what is generally known as the allergen for this. Um, this particular variety is called fireworks. It grows to about three and a half feet tall in full sun. It's a great pollen source for our butterflies as well as all of the uh, pollinators at the end of the season because this blooms fairly late in the season, uh, usually not till September or so. Um, there's some smaller varieties. Um, again, uh, the one we just saw uh, grows uh, about three and a half feet tall, but there's some varieties that grow. Uh, baby gold on the left grows about two and a half feet tall, and the little lemon should only reach uh, about a foot tall. And, uh, you know, you can grow a little bit larger than that, depending on the situ on where you planted it. Uh, a lot of times it'll this is, these like full sun, so they'll grow much better in full sun. We'll talk a little about ornamental grasses, um, warm season grasses. These uh, are going to give you a great fall display. Um, note that sometimes these are really uh, slow to emerge in the spring. They love the heat of summer. They grow best in the heat of summer, and then they start throwing up those plumes and everything in uh, August through October. Uh, warm season uh, grasses can tolerate a little bit of light shade. Um, growth is in moist, uh, well-drained areas. Um, this particular northern sea oats here, let's see, this one, uh, this particular one can reach four feet tall and bloom. Um, it's valued for those old, like little spikelet things that come out uh, above the foliage. Um, they start uh, light green, but they turn uh, red bronze in August. And uh, finally light buff, 
this is a great plant but if you don't it will reseed itself vigorously so if you don't want it to reseed all over the place cut the uh, little uh, flower spikelets the uh, actual name of those is uh, ch chasmanthiums chasmanthiums um, cut those uh, off in uh, October, otherwise they're, and they make a great uh, cut flower. However, um, if you leave them on, they can reseed profusely. Um, there's also a variegated cultivar of this. This one's got uh, just uh, plain green leaves. There's a variegated cultivar um, that has red and uh, green and white foliage that uh, called river mist that grows about three feet tall. Okay, another great grass, um, Miscanthus. It's a warm season grass, meaning it grows best in the warm seasons. There are a wide variety of these. So if you uh, wanna put grasses in, when you go into your uh, nursery or plant supplier, take a look at those little tags that are with them. Um, they'll tell you uh, how tall it is, what, uh, how wide it's going to get, and uh, what type of conditions that it needs. Does it need um, full sun? Does it need damp soil? Um, you know, some of the miscanthus grow only three feet tall. Some of them grow over nine feet. Um, morning light um, grows about uh, five feet tall and has reddish blooms that appear in October. This is a great fall color in the garden. Uh, Malapartus is a taller grass. This one grows to about uh, four to five feet but it's also got flower stalks that'll shoot up about two feet above that. So uh, it'll get to be um, late September, October, seven feet tall. Um, Miscanthus, leaving your grasses up over the winter is a great thing to do um, because it, it provides some seeds for the birds throughout the winter, but it also adds uh, texture to your garden over the winter. Okay. Most miscanthus have variegation that runs parallel um, with the vein leaves. Um, there's a, a group of them that have horizontal banding. Um, strictus is called uh, porcupine grass. This uh, uh, and uh, zebranus gold bar, which is the one you're looking at on the right, um, they have gold bands. Um, both are tall. These reach six to seven feet in bloom. Uh, they've got flowers that appear in September. Um, there's shorter miscanthus. Um, there's a variety called Little Dot that reaches three, three and a half foot tall. Um, one thing about Zebrinus, this is a very large plant. I've got it in my yard. Um, it, it, the one I have is probably about 20 years old and uh, six, seven feet wide, uh, six, seven feet around, maybe bigger than that. Um, it does grow. Uh, uh, vigorous roots and it can be very difficult once it gets to its full size to uh, split and uh, make more plants from but it, it, it's a beautiful plant and it, it, it's just it, it's just one of those things that doesn't need really any care at all fountain grass penicetums um, to, most of these will reach uh, these will be about a three by three foot mound and blooms in late August. Um, it, it, it forms a great dome shape if uh, it's got enough space, you know, meaning it's not crowded in by other plants. Um, variety of uh, different ones. The one you see on the left is called Hamlin and this reaches about two feet tall. Then you have shorter series on the right. Um, the one called Little Bunny there um, only grows about uh, two feet and this actually has uh, striped foliage. And there's also a variety called Itsy Bitsy Bunny that uh, is about a foot tall and it makes, uh, it, it's a great plant for the front of the garden. Okay, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce this. Be, uh, this is Golden Hecone Grass. Um, this is a beautiful plant. This will grow in shade. Um, it uh, cascades, it grows in a mound um, from one to three feet, from one feet to three feet. Um, rich green, looks kind of like bamboo. It's a warm season grass, but in our climate, it does best in a more shady area. Um, this is a great plant to mix with uh, things like blue hosta or pink astilbes. 
Um, that's purple juga you see in the bottom there. Um, this came, uh, this is uh, native to moist mountain areas in central uh, Japan, uh, including the areas of Mount uh, Hekone, and I'm not, I, I doubt I pronounced that properly, but that's what it's uh, named for. Okay, moving on, fall colors. We have a variety of woody, uh, woody ornamentals, uh, trees, shrubs, and vines. Um, great trees and shrubs for fall. We're all familiar with the red ace, with the red sugar maples. Uh, many cultivars are available offering great color. We know what the colors look like from September until a hard frost. Um, take into account, these are gonna be large shade trees. So this should be a background in your garden. If you want something smaller, um, please consider the Japanese maples. There are a great variety of colors and shapes and sizes on these. So again, if you want to put one in your yard, um, take a look at the labels on them. They've got great fall colors and many different types of leaves. Okay. Some are red, some are yellow. Um, they can range from uh, eight to 25 feet. So again, keep an eye, keep an eye on the uh, plant labels and uh, you know, take a look at the area where you wanna plant them in. You wanna plant them in an area where they have enough room so that they can grow to their full, uh, to a, a maturity. Um, here's another one. There's a large group of them uh, that are called cut leaf maples. They've got beautiful leaves. These uh, grow to about a six by six foot mound. Uh, Jack, sorry about that. Um, summer, lacy foliage, soft green, but on the fall it gets uh, yellow, orange, and crimson. Um, Japonicum, uh, another group of maples. These are uh, also considered, uh, this is called uh, Aconitifolium. And aconite is uh, Latin for uh, the Delphinium Larkspur group. And if you look at the leaves in uh, the lower left-hand corner there, these look like kind of like uh, Delphinium leaves. Um, this plant is uh, actually about uh, 13 years old. Um, and this only grows up to about uh, 15 feet. In the summer, it's green and uh, it, it's beautiful as a pinkish orange in the fall. Um, service berry. This is considered a, we consider this a three season plant. Um, white flowers in the spring, followed by uh, the purple berries in the uh, summer, and uh, the fall colors in the upper right there. Um, garden, this can be a specimen to draw your attention. Most are available um, as a clump, which means it's got multiple trunks, as you can see from the picture on the right. And uh, the sizes on these also range from about 15 to 30 feet. Uh, black tupelo, this is a native tree, for, uh, forms a pyramid shape. It's got glossy green leaves in the summer and uh, just uh, the beautiful fall color as you can see. A great tree, another great tree is uh, ginkgo, which has great colors. Um, it, it's one of the oldest known trees, and their origin is traced back, of course, to the Orient. Um, golden yellow fall color, many different varieties. Um, it, it's got an upright form. There are some dwarf cultivars available um, that grow short. The thing you need to know about ginkgo is you need to uh, get a female, tr a male tree. Females form fruits, and once uh, they drop their fruits, they really smell bad. Uh, a lot of, t uh, hopefully, you can get this through your nursery. Um, unfortunately, a lot of times they don't show their sex till a later age. You might think it's male until it, you know, uh, reaches about 10 years of age or 15 years of age, and all of a sudden you get the uh, you get the fruit on it. Uh, American fringe tree is another underused tree, multi-season uh, multi tree, beautiful fragrant flowers in the uh, spring, late spring, gets a blueberry, uh, blueberry after the flowers that uh, birds eat in the fall. It's that beautiful clear yellow. Um, it is a slow growing tree, but uh, one that again is not used often enough. 
Um, different colors of oak leaf hydrangea has beautiful fall colors as well as witch hazel. Um, they have July to August uh, flowers. My uh, oak leaf hydrangea is blooming right now. Um, an attractive uh, plum color in the fall. Um, they're tolerant of shade and combine well with uh, fall blooming anemones um, or by uh, golden uh, Hakone grasses. Um, witch hazel species, they're great for their fall color. Um, they offer clear yellows or uh, combinations of orange and burgundy. Again, sizes depend, you know, range from six feet to 15 feet. So again, keep an eye on that label and uh, fit it to the site that you want to put it in. Okay, common spirea. Our common spirea offer great fall colors. Um, these, uh, the, this is uh, Bomalda. Uh, it's a low growing, two to three feet with pink flowers in June. Um, that's fall color there. Henry's Garnet, another multi-season plant, uh, beautiful white flowers in spring. And uh, that's the foliage in fall. This one grows to about three feet tall and requires a full to partially sunny spot. Uh, barberries. For years, we have, uh, all we have were barberries were the common green or a couple of red leaf varieties. Um, common green ones have great fall color. There's a variety of new introductions to give us fall color. Um, Sun Joy Pillar there um, is, it has a column form and a great fall color there, a great yellow color there. Um, so there's the fall color on the uh, bar, uh, Sun Joy Gold. So now we'll talk uh, for a few minutes about combinations um, and putting things together. One of the things to look at is uh, purple uh, dome aster and the Boltoni asteroides. And here, the white flowers with the uh, purple looks great. Um, this one's got uh, fall blooming pink mums, blue spruce, and uh, pink brown cover rose. Another one, um, again, yellow mums. You can see the lantanas there. Um, along with the penicetum, which is the grass with uh, the plumes. Um, Miscantha sinensis, sinensis uh, and sedums um, work very great. Um, the uh, chrysillimus does, is, uh, has uh, just plain green leaves. It doesn't have uh, solid green leaves, it's no stripes. Um, Another uh, combination for full sun, um, the Miscantha zebranus, as well as the Joe Pye weed, uh, the purple asters, and uh, the Henry Eilers woodbeckia. Again, a couple of weeks later there with the with uh, the colors, and that would be the rebeckia there. A uh, combination for shade, because not everybody's got full sun. Um, We've got on this one, um, Honoring Jobert, uh, a fall anemone with uh, the uh, grass Aurelia and uh, the Ceratostigma pumbaginoides. I hope I got that right. I doubt it. That would be the grass. And uh, that would be uh, the purple one. Um, and, you know, don't limit your display to only September and October. Some of these, like these particular ones, continue well into November. Um, the upper left yellow um, Itea virginica. Um, then we've got a red aster in there as uh, well as just some of the Rebecca seed heads that we've had that bloomed earlier in the season. Oak leaf hydrangea, juniper, and goldenrod here. Um, all look great together in the fall. This is just a suggestion for fall colors here. Um, and then here we've got uh, Virginia uh, chlorine and this, I'm not going to forget it, uh, white fringe tree, which is uh, the white one there, and uh, the Miscanthus malapartes, which is just another uh, one. And I think we have. Uh, purple dome asters in there and hopefully we've given you know, a few things 
to inspire you and uh, such on looking for things. Um, what a difference a few things, a few weeks can make. Um, this, car, this picture was taken uh, late August, early September. Three weeks later, which puts us uh, mid-September, beginning of October, we've got all different colors. So I hope this has given you some ideas um, of uh, combinations and plants and that you can uh, go out to your garden centers and find now that will bloom and look great in the fall. Um, we'll take questions in a minute, but one more thing I'm going to share with you on this screen. Um, the master, we, master Gardener Office here in DuPage County, as well as any other county, if uh, you're not from DuPage, um, has a hotline that uh, is free to the uh, public to uh, answer questions. Um, we've got a, that's our phone number there. Um, we've also got our website there. We answer questions such as, uh, what's that spot on my tomato plant? Is that bug going to cause me any problems? As well as uh, suggesting uh, solutions for pest problems, or uh, sometimes, or we can also suggest plants uh, for a variety of situations. So, with that said, I'm going to turn hopefully my screen to be back on here. If I can do that, we'll escape here, um, and I'll turn my video back on here. Does anybody have any questions? We did have a question back when you were talking about, um, I believe it was sedums. Yes. And um, cutting those back, how far should you cut them back? She cut them back probably to 10 to 12 inches. Great, thank you. And I'm sorry if this got a little bit boring for people, I've sat through quite a few of these where we're just looking at plants and talking about their attributes and it does get a little dry after a while. But um, if anybody's got questions on, you know, any sort of gardening um, problems or, 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 or whatever, I'd be happy to try and uh, field those for you. Um, I may, you know, refer you back to the helpline there, which is a great reference. We're always willing to talk to you or send you answers and help you out. But if there's any other questions, um, please feel free to ask. I have a question, actually. Um, I have a window box. Mm -hmm. And is there, are there any plants, like fall colorful plants that I could plant in a window box as opposed to in the ground? Well, you know, uh, um, you know, some of the shorter ones, some of the shorter sedums, there's a lot of uh, See, is it sedums and things. Um, a lot of our summer plants that you've got in your window box, and especially if you've got that up closer to your house, you're, you're in what we call a microclimate. And the heat of your house um, will actually allow the plants that you've got in there to uh, bloom a little bit longer because it thinks it's a different season or, or, or a different uh, a cold zone. Um, we uh, define plants as um, zones. Um, we generally here are in zone five in Chicago and all of that is changing right in our area. And that just uh, determines how it cold it gets in the winter. If you've got something up closer to your house in say a microclimate, that can be a zone six. And whatever you planted, you know, you can plant some things for fall, you can plant the bombs, you can plant uh, pansies, or things you know like that that like it colder, but again, if it's closer to your house, those summer blooming plants are going to bloom it because it, it's going to stay a little warmer. Those summer blooming plants are going to bloom a little bit longer for you. So does that make sense? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I had a question about the um, the grasses that you were talking about. Are all of those grasses perennial grasses? Yes, all of the grasses I was discussing this evening are perennial grasses that come back every year. Does anybody have any other questions? Then I will ask another one that's not related to fall color. <laughs> oh, please do, please do. Uh, I have, it's time to stump the master gardener. <laughs> yeah, so I have zucchini. I'm, I, um, I'm growing a vegetable garden for the first time. Good, and awesome. I have zucchini um, and they um, are all 
like becoming shriveled and mushy before they are fully formed? What what is the problem? Okay, what the problem is is um, there are a variety of bugs that uh, transfer a variety of diseases that uh, you know. Uh, I I stopped growing cantaloupe because a cantaloupe and zucchini because of this they transfer diseases it uh gets you know as the weather's been real wet lately they're fungal diseases and that type of thing um you can try and prevent them by putting a, a cover over it but uh you know a lot of times you, you really can't prevent it the bugs come in they give you the disease and really you wake up one morning and you walk outside and it's all kind of a shriveled mess okay is is what happens um you can try and keep them off the ground uh there are covers available but the problem with putting covers over them is they have to be pollinated and the covers keep the pollinators out so you don't get um the the uh fruit from uh the zucchinis um one thing you can do next year is um, when you plant your seeds, take a look at the packets and find a variety. And there, there's a lot of companies available where you can get lots of different seeds, lots of different zucchinis or squash or whatever. Um, look at the varieties and look for um, fungal resistance. Same goes for tomatoes, peppers, or any other plant. Um, that's all listed on the package or in the catalogs that you're looking at. And that also can help you prevent problems next year. Perfect. Yeah, we'll see if we do it next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, plants, the plants are pretty, but we're not getting the fruit. Yeah. Um, Suzanne wants to know when the best time to plant rhubarb would be. Rhubarb, I, I, I don't know for sure. Rhubarb is a perennial, if I remember correctly. Um, and probably the best time really to plant that would be in the fall if you can get some from somebody or early spring. Anybody else want to try to stump our gardener before stump, we stump our master gardener? We, <laughs> love doing, we love doing this. You know, usually when we do this in person, um, our master gardeners, we all get um, educational time for coming in to listen to us. And then we have some, we'll have another master gardener in the room in the library that we can throw questions off of that uh, we don't know, which is really, really helpful because there's so many facets to gardening. Um, I personally wouldn't answer questions about roses or tree identification. I'd refer those to, to our helpline, but uh, annuals and perennials and most vegetables, as well as water gardens, I'm more than happy to answer questions for. But, uh, but somebody always stumps us because somebody always asks the questions. <laughs> I have a, a, a question. I've collected a number of ornamental grass seeds. Okay. Can I plant them now or when should I plant them? You know, most of us planters, you know, I plant them in the spring uh, or early spring, um, depending on the variety. Um, I planted uh, things like Joe Pye weed and um, grasses, yeah, March, Marchish. What would happen if I planted them now? Probably nothing. Uh, you probably wouldn't have a problem. You can plant them now. Um, they won't bloom in the fall, but uh, they should come back next year. Um, they, if you plant them now, they probably don't have enough time to grow to maturity and uh, set seed this year, but uh, you should be fine. They should come back next year. I have a water garden question. Um, should they be in the sun or part shade or what's the best location? Okay, it depends on the plants. Um, you wanna keep your algae growth down um, oh. is, is the best thing. And algae needs three things. It needs, it needs full sun, it needs water and it needs a food source. So, you know, a full sun is generally advised for most um, water garden plants, uh, water lilies, lotus, um, you know, most of the other ones. So, um, and again, you want to keep your, your algae growth down be, generally because it's ugly, but you're going to have the algae bloom every spring be until the water lilies or whatever you're using to cover 
the water and shade out most of it grow through. But full sun generally, especially if you want water lilies and lotus. Okay, this weekend somebody gave me some water hyacinth plants and oh, are... just, just gonna get started. Okay, um, water hyacinths are awesome plants. Um, keep them kind of crowded. They've got, if you keep them kind of crowded, they'll have uh, flowers. They've got a beautiful flower that blooms for one day, but it is beautiful. Um, these are considered actually invasive here in Illinois now. They didn't use to, but they are now. So uh, please, at the end of the season, throw them in your compost pile. Um, there are people who throw them in our waterways just to get rid of them. But, and uh, they can, you know, they clog up waterways in some of the warmer areas of the country. But uh, at the end of the season, just throw those in your compost pile and you'll be good. Thank you. Can you plant a smoke bush in a container or is it better to plant it in the ground? You know, that's one of those, I, I, I'm not totally familiar with that plant, um, but it is a large plant. So I would think, yeah, it would do okay for a year or two, a couple of years in the, um, in a pot, but eventually the roots would start girdling or growing around the inside of the pot, which would uh, cause problems for the plant. So I would think something like that larger should be in the ground. Thank you. Any more questions? This is this is this has been great talking to everybody and answering questions and everybody learning about all different things tonight. And lots of great information, Pat. Thank you so yeah. much for expanding beyond just fall color. Well, we're, 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 we're happy to provide whatever information we can, and uh, it, it's great to get out in the community and do this. Again, I, I personally prefer doing this in front of uh, an audience, but uh, for now, maybe next time uh, we can all get together in person. I hope so. Definitely. And I put in a, a link in the chat to our um, program survey, so if you guys have awesome. time, um, fill that out and just let us know what you thought of the program. Um, that would be great. That would be great. And if you could forward that uh, to Karen once you have uh, the results for that, mm -hmm. yep, that would be awesome. Yeah. Because that helps us too. Great. Well, thanks so much, everyone, for coming tonight. Thank you, everybody. Again, thank you, everybody, for coming tonight and spending a little bit of time here. I uh, hope we gave you some uh, suggestions and some ideas for your gardens, and I hope to be back and speaking with you all again uh, sometime soon. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me tonight. Have a nice night. You too.